Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the road show. This is episode 10 from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. To my left is Senior Dark. He's in the house tonight. What's up? How you doing? <laughs> he sounds asleep. Anyway, um, we've had a great time in Myrtle Beach, and I tell you guys, this is a cool place to hang out. First and foremost, we'd like to thank you for following us on Twitter at the SS Roadshow and subscribing to the YouTube channel for the SS Roadshow, as well as liking and sharing the Facebook page. What we did in Myrtle Beach was, uh, this was definitely not my first time there. Dark, you ever been before? I believe you said this was the first time you had, at least I know you'd never been to the places that we went, but had you been to Myrtle Beach before at all? No, never. I've never been there. For some reason, I thought you had played House of Blues there. No, I don't. Anyway, um, we went to the Ripley's Aquarium. We were able to go inside and look at some pretty cool aqua life. We um, got our tickets and, and headed on in. They took a crazy picture of us that looks like a turtle is attacking me. <laughs> There's a picture of Dark in the front with uh, his Mountain Dew amp. Anyhow, they turned us loose inside. We're going to go over some of the stuff that we saw there, and you can look along in the picture news or, of course, on this YouTube. This is like a tree in an aquarium kind of deal. Nothing really spectacular, but it looks really awesome the way that was displayed. The fish were going in a circle, almost like a cyclone that I couldn't capture on a still picture. Anyhow, we were also attacked by, what kind of fish is this? This looks like some kind of prehistoric. I'm not sure, man. It reminded me of uh, Finding Nemo or something. You Nemo remember, was an orange. No, you remember that evil uh, fish that was that had that glowing thing on it? So, oh, that's what it is. Look, you see on the top? That's oh, yeah, supposed the to antenna. glow, and that's supposed to be evil. Remember, and like in Finding Nemo, it, 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 it wants to eat them or something? I can't remember. I think Something like that. Well, it's, as you can see, it looks like it's trying to eat us. That was actually, oh, yeah. I think it was a slide for kids, and we, uh, we got in there and... Goofing act, around. Acted goofy. We also got to see, I'm not sure if this was a replica or if this was real. It's blocked nah, off. No, nah, it's, a, it's a replica. But uh, that's a megalodon jaw, basically. And, oh, yeah, it does say replica. Anyhow, as you can see, this thing was the size of a tour bus. Wow. Um, it was a prehistoric Great White or something to that effect. See, we learned something on this trip. Oh, yeah, definitely. There was various aquariums that you could walk up to, and then there was a series of tunnels and things that went around. Uh, they had a jellyfish display. Those looked really cool. The lighting in there was really neat. And uh, Stingray Petting Tank, which I didn't want to touch them really. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> it I, smelled I gonna, really bad over I there. Felt like, I felt like, yeah, I should touch them, because all the kids and everybody else was touching them. There was hand sanitizer stations all over yeah, this place. Yeah, that means so. it's salmonella or something. So. <laughs> you know, you have to clean it so be safe. So uh, after, we, uh, after we were hanging around there and, and watching them, they actually had a diver go in and feed them in front of us. The water looked a little dirty, and there was a lot of them in there. Apparently, they said they cut their the stinging part of the tail out, so you know they weren't able to attack or anything. But um, that was pretty cool seeing someone dive with them. They had a really cool octopus over there. Yeah, it was in was cool nice. light, so it looked it, all the. It got real close to uh, to us, remember? And and it was like moving. Yeah, you could see like, its wow. weird eye and its weird mouth. Yeah, the suction cups and everything on the bottom of the creature was so white that the lighting they had him in made it look like this really crazy kaleidoscope. Yeah, it was amazing. This next fish, I forget, what was it called? A dragon, a leaf dragon or something to that effect? A uh, weed dragon, horse, I can't remember. It was like a seahorse thing. It, it's actually a creature. It just, it looks like a it, plant. It does look like a plant. There's a couple of different pictures on oh, yeah, the, definitely. the picture look, news. Now you can tell it's an yeah, animal. Yeah, a little snout right there. It looks like a horse. You see how it, it, it kind of resembles a horse and it has... The uh, guy to the left over there, the little creature, yeah. he looks like something <laughs> out of Star Wars. Like, <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> I have to compare. Confess that half That's the time great. I have to confess that half the time through the uh, adventure of the aquarium, every time Dark and I would see an animal up close making a face at us with his mouth open or staring. We had to a make some way, kind of voice. And... We had skits going on. Oh um, yeah, we saw some endangered sea turtles that they had. They didn't have very many because it was huge. They're endangered, but uh, but yeah, this was in the tunnel where they have a, a moving sidewalk like you would get on at an airport, and you get to go through and look at all the different sharks. And also, they had divers that fed the coral fish. Uh, we got to watch that as well. Which yeah, he was doing uh, tricks, remember? With the yeah, he was blowing uh, smoke rings with his scuba bubble. Yeah, thing. he was doing some pretty cool tricks. Didn't he say, or didn't the person that was talking to us while he was in there say that most of those fish are venomous? 
I think but so. But they I'm wouldn't sure. attack him because he had the food. Yeah, she talked so fast, and and I mean, because there was so much to tell and stuff, and she talked so fast that I was just paying attention to what he was doing. He was doing right. stunts and feeding the fish, and then he was just you know putting on a show. Everybody was like, eh, and they clapped, and he was I, well he respond back because let's she was pretend saying that, that they're all venomous. If if I'm wrong, yeah. that would make a lot more fun. Um, but <laughs> anyway, the rest of the aquarium, like I said, you know, we got on this moving sidewalk thing and went through a tunnel, and you see some swordfish. Oh, here. look at that. It's beautiful. And uh, the water was really nice. It was clear oh, and light shining through. One. Big I sharks. I think one. tiger sharks, nurse sharks. Badass. Uh, swordfish laying in the sand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, is like a, this is like a slideshow in school. I feel like we're either on the docu- <laughs> or on the Discovery Channel doing a documentary or this is like reading oh, oh, rainbow. Oh, no, no. Hey, you, you remember like uh, la- laser disc and when they put the laser disc and it used to be educational and you could put frame by frame. And yeah, I remember the old school <laughs> projector too. It makes me sound old, yeah, but that's what we were doing yeah. in school. <laughs> so here's some different angles of uh, the tiger shark. Yeah, they were really that. menacing, man. I mean, the pictures don't do it justice how so scary they are. To them and it was like, boom, boom. And they're goom, so fat. Yeah, you were doing the song all the way through there. Um, oh, oh, look yeah, at there you can one. see some real such detail. A, such a great picture. It's a scary looking You can animal. see the prehistoricness of them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They just haven't changed. Um, this guy looks like he has Batman on his chest, <laughs> man. He's like, here I come. Bat shark. You know? <laughs> yeah, look at him. <laughs> they just changed the... I'm on my way. If you change the rhythm of Jaws from Batman, <laughs> Batman would be like... Dana, 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 dana. Um, bam, 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 that bam, guy bam, was bam. really cool. He snuck out of nowhere. He yeah. was. He Look looked a lot different fish than the rest. Also, so beautiful. Yeah, I was surprised they didn't just eat them. Oh, I guess they have their own food and they get used to Wait, that environment. What, what would you do if you were like in one of those cages and um, you were, you know, trying to get close to sharks but not get hurt, but those fishes can go in there? He, the shark would chase enough. them and scare the shit out of me. Probably that pieces of that particular cage looked like it was really rusted out. I was like, I hope no one gets in there. I don't think it's a real one. I think maybe it was one that they put in there and you know because it's been there long enough it got that rusty natural look to it yeah i don't think it's like one of those really sturdy ones that people dive themselves with well between the other two divers and we missed it because we got there late but they had a live mermaid show i wonder where they swim i doubt they do it with these sharks i didn't see any other bodies of water that they could do it in in there no i I doubt it's in the sharks because even though they're probably tame now they still i would would never never get no no i don't think so no they only went in um on where there was stingrays and all the other regular fish and stuff. So, well, as we were on our way out, we noticed the kids' room and we yeah. had to go ransack it. This, w- yeah, to me, looks like this looked like the biggest light bright in the world. Yeah, it, this picture makes it look like a small little board that you hold with your hands. It's now, this not. thing was the size of like a wall. All real three huge. panels each are bigger than most TV sets. The the uh, the pegs they look like candles. Yeah, the <laughs> pegs were big and they were like lucite, see through, oh, yeah. and different colors. And uh, obviously, we didn't have enough time to nah, make it didn't. anything worthwhile, but that's the best we came up with. I got an S out of SS Roadshow done. Yeah. And uh, Dark got a primitive Sonic the Hedgehog going over there. Yeah, I tried. But we had fun in there. I'm definitely going to build one of those whenever I can get the materials. Um, <laughs> this. Hot dog. Listen to this now. <laughs> Look, this caught my eye. This was, it's called the Redneck Wine Glass, and it's basically a mason jar on it, what looks like a candle holder. Oh, I love uh, it. For a, um, That's what it is. For a stem. I have those type of candle holders, dude. But it's a moonshine jar. <laughs> so I guess a redneck would get elegant like that. And if you look under it, there's a, a uh, sippy cup yeah. moonshine jar right in the bottom, with a yeah. straw yep, in it. I, I see them. And uh, see them. we had already bought enough memorabilia that. and magnets and toys and stuff, so we didn't spend any money on this stuff but i wish i would have that's perfect for those people that do those redneck wedding shows and you know that you know they're looking for stuff you know so they be, probably patented this oh, idea they'll make their own you know i mean look that's easy to make you just go to dollar tree get two of those and you then know? find a glass and blower. then you get those two jars <laughs> a little, then, little bit of poxy, how do you get them together bam you're done <laughs> yeah i guess you, you could do that or you can just that's uh, probably how it started then yeah, it evolved definitely. into a, a mm-hmm. real company but anyhow um that was on the way out of the gift shop so we had a laugh all the way through and um it was actually really cool and educational i highly advise if you're in the area to check out the aquarium after that we rode around this whole place is called broadway at the beach it's almost like a big for people that are listening outside of Central Florida, like um, here we have like City Walk and Downtown Disney. It was kind of like that if you've ever 
visited here. It was like or, a combination of uh, yeah, and it you know there's restaurants, bars, yeah, it. yeah, almost like the uh, old town area. Yeah, of, there you go. But a lot more. This being such a big tourist destination, you know, it had a lot more variety. The theater that we saw was not playing any shows, but that's a beautiful building. And then there was a place called Celebrity Square where there's Elvis impersonators, stand-up comics. I think they have an improv, just like most uh, big cities do. Hard Rock Cafe was there, and it was awesome because this particular building looked like a big pyramid in the desert with two huge sphinx um, kind of animals in front of it and it had the king tut's uh crown kind of thing going on we stopped in a place called carlos and charlie's it was like a little oh yeah it was was that mexican food what would you it was mexican food and it's basically a restaurant where you can just get regular drinks and you can get like an appetizer and you get a full course meal but it looked like the the size, the the servings that they were serving, it was so much. <laughs> we, only we basically got... had three appetizers. Yeah, and um, and were stuffed beyond belief. Um, it was so good. Like, but they they it have it wasn't just you know regular junk food. It it was really good. Yeah, they had margaritas, they had uh, steak nachos, you know that kind of thing. So we ate there, and uh, when we got out of Ripley's, you know the weather at the beach is kind of chilly considering the time of year. And uh, we were actually able to use some of my family's fire pit. We built this huge bonfires. There's a few pictures. We caught some images that looked like shapes, you know. Yeah. And uh, that was fun. It was awesome though, because it was just cold enough. It was like in the high 40s, maybe. And you know, we just had a few drinks and kicked back, burned some beer cans <laughs> up, and <laughs> and drank and listened to heavy metal and uh, hung out with some neighbor friends. That was really cool, considering where we live. If it's uh, not 100 degrees, it's only down to 80. <laughs> so it was cool to get out and uh, uh, experience some... Uh, look, that's the firecock. Oh, yeah. that This one for here <laughs> looks like a rooster, <laughs> like just strutting. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's anyway, awesome. the bonfire was cool. Find shapes. Tell us what you think they are. That'll be a fun game. Oh, I got to tell you this. Guess what I saw? For all you Star Wars, my fellow Star Wars fans out there, the newest collective item that could definitely break the bank but would be worth it is the Han Solo Frozen in Carbonite desk. That's bad. Layer of glass over him. You know, (laughs) full size it looks like. That's sick. And then it's got the inside of the Death Star pattern where the lights are on the sides of it. That would be the coolest desk if Dude, like at your house like if you have a nice big house and you put your computer or your like that studio have to be, yeah you or if you're working at a, at a job that allows you to put whatever you want in your office you put that there oh man that's so cool dude i would make my star wars collection room my office and then build around that so yeah. it, it fit the theme of the room that's awesome i thought that was cool i didn't even bother looking at where to buy it or what the price is because it's just not in the means of the budget right now i know that thing's got to be expensive um, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a real quick break and give some love to our sponsors. And then we will be right back to discuss some of the beers that we had in the Myrtle Beach area. Hang on for us. We'll be right back. Listen up, everybody. I need to talk to you real quick about Cat Ward Productions. Again, that is Cat Ward Productions. Photography, graphics, web, promotions, marketing, and more. Cat did the logo for the road show. We couldn't have asked for better customer service, better vision, better hands-on working with representing our products. She can do the same for you, too. Contact Cat Ward at catwardproductions at gmail. That's C-A-T-W-A-R-D, Cat Ward Productions at gmail.com. Get in touch with Kat. She will make your project look good. All right, folks, we're back, and we're going to move right along to some beers that we tried, as we had mentioned earlier. Our favorites here were uh, the theme of, of most of our journey through the Dirty South was a lot of pumpkin beer. You know, the it, it just feels so much more like fall as opposed to where we live. So the first one we're going to get to is Pumpkin Spiced Ale by Cottonwood. Honestly, this one was a little too dry for me. Yeah, I didn't like it either. Um, it, I don't like pumpkin beer to be too sweet or too spicy, but this was almost too bland. It had a weird taste to it. Uh, I don't know what it was, but um, it, it didn't have that taste like all the other ones that we've tried so far. And It was too strong. I don't know. Bitter. It was bitter. Yeah, it, it was bitter, but empty. It was really thin. It didn't have a full body flavor like most of the, yeah, I didn't. the beers like that. One of the ones we did like, we're just going to move on. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like undrinkable, but anyway. 
Uh, Bex makes an Oktoberfest, which I didn't mind that. Um, that was pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of Bex. This was probably the best beer I've had by Bex. It wasn't too strong. It wasn't too thin. It was balanced. No, I like that one. Um, I'm not a Beck person, but that tastes pretty good. Yeah, because it still has that German Hefeweizen kind of character to it, which is usually bitter to me, at least my palate. Like he- like Heineken. Yeah, almost. You know, it's got that same kind of flair to yeah. it. But uh, but this one, it just, it all balanced out. So uh, this is the first time I've ever tried it. It's probably pretty common considering Bex is in most of your neighborhood stores. But if you get a chance, definitely try this Oktoberfest. We thought that was pretty good. It was more of what we were looking for and not what Pumpkin Cottonwood had. <laughs> so Yeah, that was, that was bad. Anyway, speaking of alcohol, what's been so neat about this trip is that there's been foods and places and stuff along this journey that Dark hasn't gotten to experience yet. And one thing was moonshine. You had never had moonshine before. No. And uh, we got some of Junior Johnson's Midnight Moon. I said, let's take this and uh, let's watch this show mm. on Netflix, which I had watched a few seasons of, but he had never heard of the show Moonshiners. Naturally, as we're drinking it and watching him make it and just playing along, um, he sort of you know, fell in love with the culture of, of uh, moonshining and got to know some of the characters and actually... I think you found some dirt on one of the popular and grandfather of the movement, if you will, um, Popcorn Sutton. You want to tell us what you got in the news over there? I was looking online, and um, we were watching Moonshine the other day. And uh, the funny thing is, recently, Jack Daniel claims this rival distiller is a copycat. Popcorn Sutton, after he died, uh, his company, or what do you call it, his recipe was uh, revived, and somebody managed to help uh, bring it back up and uh, legalize it to sell it i think his wife and hank williams jr got together yeah, to, there you go. to pay for yeah the, yeah there you go the, the distribution singer. of it yeah, and actually yes. mm-hmm. tax it and make it legal exactly what's going on right now is that jack daniels is looking at the bottle the font you know the writing and the label and also the the style and um i'm looking at it, it looks like a futuristic yeah, version I, of a jack daniel bottle the looks, font like you said is the same tennessee oh, is, yeah. is big and in focus and look at the uh what is this called filigree yeah exactly the shape of the bottle definitely but but here's what i heard um i had heard before this story that jack daniels was making a white whiskey of some sort it was almost like a moonshine rather than your colored whiskey that you see in your standard bottle. And I think what had happened there was people were mistaking Popcorn Sutton's white whiskey as the product that Jack Daniels has in their line. And they said, hey, you know, there's enough evidence of confusion that we're pretty much going to have to cease and desist and make you stop packaging it this way, I think was the big issue. Well, here, check this out. According to MSN, it says, sell all the wine you want in square bottles, but don't be trying to peddle whiskey. (laughs) At least not if Jack Daniel has his way. The distiller is suing up star Popcorn Sutton saying the rival hooch maker is ripping off Jack Daniel's iconic square bottle and distinctive label in its new packaging. So yeah, they're saying that there's cause enough to believe that purchasers yeah. or prospective then, purchasers exactly. would mistake it for the mm-hmm. Jack Daniels white whiskey. Yeah, that's what it is. They they want to make sure that people don't think, oh, hey, that's the, that must be that new product that Jack Daniels is coming out, the um, the white whiskey they were talking about. I looked you for know? that the other day in a liquor store just to see if they had it. Uh, one, to compare to this story, and two, I wanted to try it. It's very hard to find. No one had it. Maybe they must have taken them down for now until they settle this issue because, you know, if they're still selling it and then all of a sudden it starts selling really good because of this. Yeah, I could see some issues there. Yeah. You know what's funny, though, is uh, I'm reading along with you here. It says that um, Nick Reifsteck, a, a Louisville liquor store manager, he said that when they sold it in mason jars, it sold better because it was more of a curiosity. curiosity. Yeah, more like, you know, the old more school. authentic and, uh, and it had a, a little more of an outlaw feel to it. But what's funny is before Popcorn died, he said himself, my moonshine is too good to be sold sold in mason jars. Yeah, I made all kinds of liquor in, in my town. I made the fighting kind, the loving kind, the crying kind. I even made some one time and sold it to this couple. They were happily married. The next damn week, they're divorced. <laughs> So he, I guess in his vision, if it ever became legal, he wanted it to be in something unique. I just think that they just, there's way too much likeness there. You know what I think also it is? I think that, um, what's his name? Hank William Jr.? 
Yeah. I think what it is that he uh, looked up to Popcorn Sutton and the history, and he admired that whole movement and he respected it, and so he wanted to help with that. On top of that, he might also be a, um, you know, he's a rock star. He's a, he's a country singer. He was influenced by that, but he didn't mean to steal like it. It was a subliminal. It was more like a tribute because it was like, you know what? I like Jack Daniel, and Popcorn yeah. Sutton needs to legalize his stuff. I love how, you know, we'll be perfect to mold it. Kind of like Jack Daniels, but I don't think they they're seeing it as a tribute or you know like privilege. Well, Jack Daniels definitely isn't seeing it as anything other no, than exactly. competition. They're they're like, hey, wait, and whoa, this, this is going like on the here? equivalent of pr- plagiarism. It's but like the same exact one, just a little bigger. Hey, what's going on here? So, well, anywho, um, that's what's going on with the Jack Daniels and uh, Popcorn Sutton moonshine fiasco. Like I said, I'm gonna keep looking for both. I want to try them both and. We'll do a comparison later one day, and, uh, you know, I can't deny Jack Daniels' right to look at, you know, what's best to protect their product, but I just hate that it's, you know, with such a small upcoming outfit. But nonetheless, um, when we were out at Michael Waltrip's on our last show on Episode 9, we went over to Michael's shop, and Rob Kaufman co-owns that place. He's a car collector and just like a high-end car salesman. And uh, on this picture right here, this is his his business called RK Motors. Basically, it looks like a convention center hall. Just precious cars are in there. You know, they've got everything from modern street cars to a lot of classic muscle cars, old race cars that were actually Mm. run or either replicas of, as you see. Nice and shiny. This was a Dale Earnhardt senior car from the Bush series in Junior's number. You know, they all used to run the number eight. I thought that was really cool. So what I started doing was I decided, hey, you know, I'm going to look into the inventory and just, you know, dream a little and see what they've got. So as we've been mentioning online, I'm going to debut this new segment we're talking about, which is Car Talk. And what we're going to do is uh, every now and again, we're going to flip over to RK Motors and we're going to dream a little bit. And um, each of us are going to pick a car. We're going to tell you what we like about it and just a quick rundown, some of the stats involved. So I will start us off here. I picked a 1957 Chevrolet. The reason I did is because my cousin used to remodel and do body work on 57s exclusively so i grew up around them and uh, it, that's a sharp looking car i love the mag wheels that's pretty cool uh, and another color would be better probably. i was gonna say the dusk pearl is not necessarily my cup of tea but the rest of the car looks sharp um it's got a silver and black interior nice. it's got a 383 v8 motor strong as can be and of course, it's a it's a sedan. Um, what year again? It is. It's a 1957 Chevy. No, wow. one, I, two, three o'clock, four yeah. o'clock. Rock. Oh, look at that! But That's it looks a, mean, man. <laughs> that thing looks mean. I'm gonna go drink a, a, a what is that called? The shake soda shake. A whatever, malt. Whatever, a malt with the chicken. So, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. I'll I'll drink. That's classic with the chicken. That thing. Yeah, hell yeah. But yeah, if I if I could pick off the list right now, that's what I would pick. And. Um, <laughs> Let's see. So that's, awesome. that's my pick for this edition of Car Talk. Feel free to leave comments and whatnot. Uh, Dark, I think you picked through and yeah. give us a little rundown of what you liked out of the inventory. Well, actually, you know, it's funny. I don't. I'm not big on this company for like modern cars that they've made recently. You know, uh-huh. for a long time. This one, I, I, the one that I picked was a 1930 Ford Coupe. It's got a 383 V8. Look at that engine. Look at. I mean, it's. That's it's the same engine that's in the 57. I would, if I had the money, I would get one just like that. Maybe I might put maybe I don't know some kind of effects on the side. No stupid fire rod, hot right, rod right. thing, because everybody does that. But something unique. But I just love that it's just got that it's got that old gangster look, you yeah, know. I was like, gonna say you look like Al Capone. Yeah, exactly. Up in that thing. Yeah, Shane. You know, I'm just <laughs> you know roll somewhere with a Tommy gun and then. <laughs> Not only that, also because of, uh, you know, the music that we usually play is usually gothy and metal and stuff, and it's really dark. That'd be awesome because, you know, I'm saying you're dark, and if I had a vehicle like that, dude. That's cool, man. You got a black exterior, or actually, that's dark gray metallic. And, oh, yeah. uh, it looks black. It's got a black interior, obviously. Yeah. That Beautiful. is a hot car. I mean, the prices on these are, are running anywhere from 69000 and up, so obviously um, we get more subscribers, more listeners, and some more sponsors dollars maybe we could drive one of these and <laughs> i'm surprised he didn't have a tesla in his inventory i know right Imagine i was looking i was oh. like oh, of course i'm gonna have to pick that one <laughs> too new too new but anyhow um check out rkmotors.com they're you know affiliates with michael waltrip racing and you'll see some cool cars there you know dream a little 
look back through all the historic cars, look at the new stuff. They got motorcycles, trucks, all kinds of crazy stuff. So we encourage you to check that out, and that way you can look along when we do this segment every now and again as we decide how to factor it into our format. Music news. It's been a while since anything's really grabbed me in that world. I'm a huge fan of Jane's Addiction. I've always listened to them through my teenage years and when I first started playing music. You know, they were an image band that had a great sound, and they made a big mark on the Hollywood and um, Los Angeles scene as far as music goes. And I was really proud to see that they actually got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And um, as you can see here, they did the red carpet ceremony with them. They were able to take pictures touching their star. They also received almost like a commemorative plaque. I guess that's a picture. I wonder if it's actual like a granite that you can feel or if it's just a picture in there. I can't tell. Probably from a here. picture of each. Yeah, it's the uh, same copy one. Of, I mean, I'm sorry. It's a copy for each of that picture right there so they can keep it with them. That's a super cool deal, though. Um, like I said, I'm... I'm proud of those guys. That's uh, that's a big deal to not just do what they've done for music, but to get you know recognized in the mainstream. What do you think? Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So uh, on that note, check that out. If you want to see that ceremony, I think it is up on YouTube. So um, go to YouTube and I guess type in Jane's Addiction Walk of Fame or whatever, and you can see the ceremony. I haven't even gotten to watch it yet. Like I said, super proud of those guys, so check that out. And uh, hang on for us. We're going to give some love to a sponsor again, and then we'll be right back with some more news for you. Welcome to SinisterGuitarPicks.com, home of the Metal Edge Guitar Picks. Sinister Guitar Picks is the only guitar pick company to make picks with real metal edges without the entire pick being made out of metal. Our picks produce a superior tone, faster attack, and they are way more durable than standard picks. If you don't believe us, go to our testimonial page and hear what other guitarists have to say. Sinister is more than just a guitar pick company, it's a lifestyle. Check out our clothing line, jewelry, and accessories to show everyone your love for music and that you're living this Sinister lifestyle. Again, visit SinisterGuitarPicks.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to The Road Show. We are going to get to a story that really made me laugh. I think it made Dark laugh. Um, <laughs> it's factual, but... Believe it or not, you know the World Cup soccer, it, it encompasses like every team in the world. It's like a huge deal. So Yeah, definitely. They only do it every four years, and now they're doing it in Brazil. And oh, actually, boy. there's going to be a large influx of uh, English-speaking people coming into the country. So what I've found out is that prostitutes are actually getting free education in English language to better serve their clients during 2014. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I'm assuming it's legal there if the government is paying for this. And if it's not, they're allowing it for because of that special cage, and they already know the amount of money happen, they're going to bring in. Might as well regulate it, right? You know. How <laughs> many people do you think? I mean, I guess you'd have to look at <laughs> you'd have to look at the number of other countries where it's legal or normal, uh -huh. and then do some sort of a math equation to figure out how many people do you think are really going to spend that much money and engage in that behavior while they're over there? I think it'd be half and half with Americans because there's such a stigma well, here, but then you know, you're know you out of the well, country and you can try it. I mean, what, what do you think it's, how do you think it's going to go? It's going to go wild because here's the thing. There's alcohol involved. There's people that are you know routed up and uh, excited and going crazy. They're in another place. You know? they're, they're not exactly. at home. They'll never see these people yep, again. Strangers out there. They've never been there before or people that um, are not from that area. The people that are from that area are, you know, going to try to, like, you know, be like, oh, this is our turf and stuff, you know. It gets pretty wild in, in soccer games. So stuff, pimps so. are going to be slapping. Oh, yeah. Um, let me ask you an honest question. If you were able to go and watch the World Cup, tell me the truth now. Would you uh, do it just to just to do it? Maybe not even fuck the girl, but, like, you know, just get a little 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 tug or something, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's funny because they, you don't have to worry about if she's gonna be like, ah, you wanna, you know, you know she'll, she'll be like, she, she'll be able to be like, would you like a blowjob? And you'd be like, yes, you know. So I mean, <laughs> you'd never. I think you're tiptoeing around the answer. Um, would you do? Would you do it or not? Like in in any whether it was a hand job or a blowy or fucking uh, or actual full blown sex. I mean, would. Would knowing that it's okay and that you could get away with it, would you? Would that entice you to do it for the first time? 
I'm saying, would you do it? And I'm even giving you an out by saying, you know, oh, it's okay. I'm in an area where this isn't illegal. You don't have to worry about that aspect. I guess, you know, disease would be a big scare. But I mean, could you see yourself doing it just for the simple fact that, hey, it's okay. Let me try it. Like some people do in Amsterdam. I don't know. No, me personally, no, I wouldn't. I mean, uh, it, I mean I'm it sure sounds your girlfriend enticing. will like this. No, answer. no, hell no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying, put it this way: if I was single and I was without, you know, girl and stuff like that, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. No, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that I'm very picky and I get. Well, if you, know, you had to, you were able to pick and you just pay a price. No, your no, drug. it's just the I've never, I've never been one of those people that go crazy about prostitutes or anything like that. I got a little issue with like disease and stuff. I don't want to catch stuff, so you know, I, I'm pretty careful. So yeah, no, I don't know. I don't think you'd do it. No, I think you'd get drunk and say you would, and you'd chicken out. I just, I just try my best to like, you know, have a good time and not make sure that um, you don't get no crazy soccer hooligan. I wouldn't do it. Pissed off and kick your ass. I'm just gonna come right out and say I wouldn't do it. (laughs) Um, Speaking of promiscuous activity, um, in episode six in Cleveland, we talked about this whiskey we found called Chicken Cock. Yeah. So now, anytime I see anything remotely like that, I um or that sounds remotely like that, I always go at least check on whatever this is. So I'm watching a TV show, and they pan by this bar called The Hand and Cock. And I sort of, <laughs> I, I did like a double take. I was like, no, that didn't say that. And then I I rewound it and froze the frame, as yeah. you can see right here. It says it on the building, but then I look over. What's hanging above the pub is, you know, a, like a rooster sitting in somebody's hand. Like The is Hand this, and Cock. Is this a show you were watching? Yeah, I was watching... Um, it's called The Increasingly Poor Decisions of Todd Margaret. Mm. Well, it's a documentary? It's a com- no, it's a comedy. It's a oh, okay. David so Cross it's, comedy. It's probably it's fake. Com- that's not real, then. They probably put it for uh, you know for the angles for, for the show. Well, Remember in Seinfeld? In Seinfeld, there was a different name from the actual name that they had on there. Just yeah, just yeah, the yeah. So. You can tell the, by the one panel. But yeah. actually, no, they did it on the other side. Well, it says cock on the other side. They, made, they, they should... Made, they probably did it as a set. Yeah. That's but uh, to our friends at Chicken Cock Whiskey, if this place is real, you should definitely market your product there because that's the perfect home yeah. for it. I thought about it um, when I saw it, so I figured we'd give them a quick shout out. Dark, you fascinated with space. Have you seen this story about uh, about the, the Mars ordeal and how they're trying to colonize the place? Yeah, it's called Mars One. That's going to be the name of the... Is it going to be like a cocoon? Mars One is the actual project. They're going to bring a couple of people from different age range, and they're going to take them up there somewhere around 2018 or 2030. I'm not sure. In the near future. And uh, the goal right now is Probably that... Probably going to leave their ass there, too. Well, the, the goal is to leave them there <laughs> permanently. Cause really? They, yeah, because at first they were going to do it for like a year or something like that and bring them back to tell us the experience. But the problem is that when you change the uh, atmosphere and the you know planets are totally different and this one's a little bit smaller and there's no air right now, they need certain elements to be able to survive and grow some... Um, so it's... You got to die there now if you go. Yeah. Regardless of what age. What they want is they want people to go over there like if they were going as pioneers, like the people that came over here to American soil in the beginning, their goal was to come over here and settle. They weren't going to go back to their countries to face all that suffering. That they so were. regardless of what age you are, you got to die there. Even yeah, the young so people. The, the thing is that they're telling people, because they're, they're, they're looking for people right now and stuff. You know, I'm not Anybody going. can actually apply for it. But what they want to do is, is they want to take a couple of groups, train them well, train them in an isolated uh, simulator to make sure they'll be able to handle certain situations. Well, yeah, and I mean, see it, how you well can't just fly You up can, there. you know, um, operate by yourself, you know, or independently or with a team, you know. Also know that you're going to stay there, so you're going to go over there. The goal is for the vehicle first to land safely and you make it on there. Because right now there's a, there's the uh, Curiosity, um, uh, what do you call it, the rover. And that rover right now is, uh, has found out that there's water I was going to say, Mars. you're going to have to have water. to, And, yeah, and that's exactly. been the biggest battle so far in this, hasn't it, is yeah. finding evidence of, of water to be able to support our human life. Exactly. So um, I found in uh, CBS News online, there's an article here and it says water discovered in Mars surface layer. Okay. So what happened is that there's water in Mars and several other elements that would be important for sustaining life on the red planet. The discovery comes from NASA rover Curiosity as part of the mission to explore Mars. So the the robot fa- or the rover found yeah. it and uh 
is this going to speed up as far as the, the process of you had said 2030 I think before is when they wanted that's to be their, able to do that's it. That's their target goal to is that, go around that time because that time you know from here to that time we should be able to invent or construct the the vehicle that we would need and remember it takes a long time to get to Mars so the majority of that journey in the beginning is going to be you're going to be just you know floating in space until you finally get there right. then the other thing is you got to wait till uh, if you land and, and when you know break through the atmosphere and then when you sit there and you and you land you know, are you able to just open up and, uh, you know, expose yourself first? I mean, you can't just, like, take off your stuff because there's no air, so you have your suit on. Right, but right. you got to make sure to survive it first, you know, because, you know, it would suck that everything going well and then you don't land or, you know, the atmosphere is different and you crash it and then the whole, you know, all that planning goes down the drain. They want to, you know, station some people over there with some greenhouses or some kind of uh, uh, habitat so they can stay, live in, and they're going to be able to grow different types of plants and things. So it's going to be a long time to get there. It'll take a long time to get settled. It'll take yep. a long time to get... I mean, it's we're not going to see, you know, people just moving to Mars. No, no, a, no. It's going to take a long nearly time. Nearly a Very lifetime. long time. So anyway, so what happened is they found cool water. Story, though. And water and carbon dioxide, um, oxygen, and sulfur compound turned into the curiosity rover first analyzed Martian soil. So what it did was it, it was checking around because that machine has different types of sensors and um, devices to check like what kind of elements does the soil have and right. the air and stuff. And so what it found out when it did a test is that the dust and dirt in the fine soil collectively known as fine, they were heated to 835 degrees Celsius and the result shows that the particles contain several percent of water by weight. Nice. So, you know, they know that there's not as much as there is in Earth because in Mars it's well, only yeah, about two percent of the soil is uh, surface of Mars is made out of water. Well, in the grand scheme of things, considering very uh, great a great resource, even that small of a percent. So I don't know, man. Like I said, this is a cool story. I always been a big fan of this since they put that little rover guy onto the planet. So hopefully, the only problem that they ha they're facing right now is that the newly discovered water mm -hmm. is very extremely acidic. So they have to be able to figure out if they're able to filter or change it up, you know, do some chemistry stuff. And if it's able to be used for, you know, consuming. Well, yeah, that'll change the game right there. So that's the thing. So right now, I mean, there is water, but the water's not drinkable like, you know, like you'd be able to drink it here, you know. It, oh, yeah, of course. It this has to be processed. It's going to be a big process. So it's going to be, a, yeah, it's going to take a little bit. But well, at least we know there's water there. Well, as much as we like this, I'm sure we'll keep everyone up to date on anything we yeah. see. You know, NASA's near here, so we got all the news of everything they're up to over there um, as far as when we're in Orlando. Um, the, we have a NASA channel, actually. <laughs> Speaking of TV, again, um, another show I was – I forgot to tell you about this. I, I finished watching all of the Todd Margaret show, and uh, everybody's pretty much familiar with Sopranos, right? Yeah. And uh, my personal favorite character – played by Stevie Van Zant was uh, Silvio. Gosh, what was his last name? I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, he played Silvio, which was one of Tony Soprano's right-hand man. A funny story about the actor, his name's Stephen Van Zant. He was never an actor before. He never did a play. He never did TV. He never did anything. And mostly famous for being in Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band. Okay. He's like his main guitar player. Oh, okay, cool. So somehow he landed this miracle on Sopranos. And obviously that show ended. And uh, about a year ago, I saw a Netflix exclusive when they first started deciding that they were going to make exclusive shows for their subscription that you yeah. can only watch there. Mm -hmm. And they put him in a show called Lilyhammer, which he was, you know, the main character, kind of a mob boss figure. And long story short, he ended up going into witness protection and they moved him to Lilyhammer, Norway. Oh, he wow. picked there because it's like freezing cold, yeah. no one's around, and no one will probably find him. <laughs> so I, it was That's a short great. season, and I watched it, and it was really good. It wasn't like he was, you know, it was a familiar role, but he wasn't being Silvio all over again. Yeah. And now they're saying that in December of 2013, they're going to debut his second season. So I thought it was an entertaining show. If you like any type of mob culture, especially with a twist, I would advise watching this. You should check it out as well, Dark. You know, like I said, it's it's really neat. As hard as it is to make it an entertainment these days, to see a guy that had never been on TV gets on one of the greatest shows in TV history, in my opinion, and now here he is with his own show, and it looks to be going good getting a second season. So for a guitar player out of New York, that's not a bad day's work. Yeah, not bad. 
Anywho, why do I say that lately? I'm like, anywho, I think I heard somebody do it. It sounds fucking lame. I watch a lot of Simpsons. I think that's where you hear Okay. I'm going to tell you guys a little secret. I was debating whether or not to tell this or not, but um, as you all know, earlier after the Dead to Us All tour, we left our band that we were playing with at the time, and uh, the two of us have been working on some new tracks. We've got three things in the works, and we actually have three singers that we're going to be auditioning here probably around the 1st of December. So the boys kept the band together. We've stuck together and decided to uh, to do another heavy metal band. And yeah. uh, it's a currently unnamed project. Aww. We've got three currently unnamed badass singers that we're going to... All of them are awesome. All of them are unique. We're going to see what they're going to do with our stuff and hopefully get the show moving along to where we can get back out and play shows. Um, oh, yeah. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for listening to The Road Show. For Senior Dark and everyone else involved, we would like to invite you again to subscribe to YouTube, leave a comment, rate it, do something to help us um, keep this thing moving along. You know, like I said, leave a comment on Facebook, say hi on Twitter, and keep listening to the show. Please tell a friend. We've had fun, and we'll see you on the next episode. Road shows getting on down the road. Yeah, I've made all kinds of liquor in, in my time. I've made the fighting kind, the loving kind, the crying kind. I even made some one time and sold it to this couple. They was happily married the next damn week. They was divorced. <laughs>